Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of This Is Automation Live. I'm your host, Corey Dallas, and I'm very happy to have you with us today. So we're going to be talking about modern HMI design. I'm going to be giving you guys three tips on how to take your HMI from industrial and functional to modern and beautiful and elegant. Um, we'll talk a little bit about why that's important, why you may want to consider doing that. These three tips should help get you one step closer to making a really great HMI. Uh, coming up next week, we have our episode on AGVs and AMRs. Uh, hot topic today, a lot of people using those three letter acronyms, um, but I think uh, maybe fewer people uh, actually know what's going on underneath the hood of an AGV or an AMR. So we're gonna be talking about that, give you guys kind of a quick introduction to that technology, what makes that technology move, and where we see some of those use cases and applications. So if that's interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to the channel, set up notifications, and that way, every time we go live, you'll get a update. Okay, let's go ahead and get started um, with our three tips. So, tip number one. This one's pretty simple, guys. Use a flat and simple design, okay? A lot of times when we're looking at an industrial HMI, you're gonna see something like what's on the left-hand side there. A lot of gradients, um, a lot of bitmap images um, with lots of colors and contours, um, which may seem like a good idea, but it actually can create a, a quite confusing and complex uh, user experience. So what you wanna do is minimize the amount of gradients that you're using, minimize the complexity of the shapes that you're using, minimize the complexity of the images you're using. So something on the left would be uh, what not to do, kind of this standard looking industrial approach. On the right hand side would be something more modern, more simple, a flat design. Um, so here you can see we're just using one consistent color for the background of the button. Um, we're using a, kind of a standard case uh, for our word instead of all caps. Uh, and then in the, in the event that we wanna put an image in our button, it's a good idea to use icons um, instead of these bitmaps. It can be, again, a little more modern feeling. Make sure there's consistency in the color palette there. Um, and if you have the ability within your platform, adding a little drop shadow, as you can see there on the right-hand side, gives some depth to your button. Um, it makes it uh, stand out and make sure that the user understands that, hey, this is a button that I can press and not just some text surrounded by a blue square. So that's tip number one. It's really simple. Use a flat and simple design. Anytime you get the uh, idea to add something complex, you know, uh, moving animations, things like that, it's often, while it can be fun to make, often not practical to use uh, in an actual industrial environment. As simple as possible helps. Um, the number one reason for that is training. Uh, I think everybody has, has experienced there's a shortage of skilled labor. It's hard to keep people on a line. It's hard to train them. It takes a long time. So as much simplicity as you can add into your design, that's really, really gonna help. And it's gonna make the user uh, get up to speed faster. They're gonna make less mistakes. Uh, and it's just gonna be a better experience. Okay, so flat and simple design is tip number one. Let's hop over to tip number two. Use familiar UI elements. And when I say UI, I mean user interface. So oftentimes, for some reason, there's some discrepancy between the user interface elements we use in the industrial world and the user interface elements we experience you know, in consumer products. So my recommendation here is don't try to reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. So an example that I have here, I think we've all seen these on these, these kind of industrial style HMIs is these like uh, light indicator lights, um, which is of course a throwback to the, the older panels that have you know actual indicator lights on them. Um, I get the idea, but this can be very confusing user interface, especially to someone who may not be familiar with how these are used. So look at the, the two lights that I have here on the screen, which one of these is on and which one is off? Um, who knows, right? So maybe you say, well, the, the lighter one is on because that indicates a brighter light. Okay, sure, we'll go with that. The, the lighter one is on and the gray one is off. Now, what about this case? Which one is on, which one is off? Okay, maybe it seems like the, the, the reddish pink one is on because it has color and the, and the white one is off now. So now we've got kind of two conflicting uh, use cases where that white one means on in one environment and off in the next environment. 
and same here now maybe this this light pink one is now off in this case and the bright red one is on so you can see how this can be confusing especially when there's there's not a a real standard way that these elements are used so again i understand why people use these but my recommendation to really improve the usability and user experience in your hmi is to use familiar ui elements so that's elements like you see here on the screen toggle switch radio button checkbox these are things that everybody is using every day every website uses these your phone uses these whether it's an iphone or an android these are common well understood well researched user interface elements that people know how to use okay so the only thing you have to be careful about now when you're using these familiar ui elements that's going to give your your hmi a more modern more usable feel is you have to use them the right way so I wanted to quickly talk through how these three are gonna be used. There's of course more than this, but this is just an introduction and then some use cases of how not to use them. And then we'll move on to tip number three. So toggle switch. You should use a toggle switch anytime you're turning something off or on, okay? So off or on, that's a use case for a toggle switch. And you can see here, it's very easy to understand which one of these is off and which one of these is on. Again, very common, easy to use radio button you're going to use radio buttons when you're selecting one item from a list of items okay and we'll look at an example of that in just a second so it makes more sense but you should never see in a group of radio buttons multiple selected that means you're probably not using it in the right use case and maybe you should look at using either checkbox or toggle switch so checkbox is when you want to select multiple items from a list okay so keep that in mind. Again, it's great that, that now maybe you're on board with these familiar UI elements, but you gotta know how to use them so that you're using them in a familiar way, okay? We wanna leverage all of the research and work that's been done already uh, in the consumer industry and in the industrial industry to make it easier for our users to use the HMI, okay? So we have to make sure we're using it in a consistent manner. Okay, so let's, let's look at this example of machine settings. These are settings that I can turn off or on inside of my machine. Maybe I've got a data collection uh, option a remote access option and you know the the capability to turn on this labeler okay so here is a really good use case for toggle switches we're turning things off and on does the machine have data collection enabled off on right what would be a bad use case here is radio buttons okay radio buttons there's there's two things wrong with this one is we've got two of them selected um so we're using it wrong right away remember a radio button we're only selecting one item from a list and the other thing is that we can select multiple of these so the radio button's not the right thing to use there. So in this kind of example, you'd wanna use a toggle switch. So use toggle switches to turn something off or on. Okay, let's look at this example with checkbox. So let's say our, our machine can send alarm emails. Uh, so anytime an alarm comes up on the machine, I wanna send an email out. Now, what if I have some options on how frequently I can send those? This is a great use case for a checkbox because I can select multiple of these, right? I wanna get an immediate notification, but I also want a daily notification, a summary of all the alarms that have happened, right? So you can see that indicated with the checkbox list on the right, the left-hand side there. So I'm selecting multiple options from a list. Checkboxes is what we wanna do. Again, on the right-hand side, a bad use case for radio buttons. It's very confusing when you see a radio button interface that you can select multiple options. Uh, you definitely don't wanna use it that way. It's gonna confuse your users. Okay, and then the last one we'll look at it's an actual good use case for radio button. We've been trashing on the radio button, but there are good use cases for it. So again, when we want to select one item from a list, that's where we use our radio buttons. Okay, so in this example, maybe we can switch units inside of our HMI between metric and imperial, for example. So obviously only one of those can be valid at any given time. So exactly one choice out of a list. There we go. Perfect use case for a radio button. So you can see there on the left-hand side how we're using that. You would not, in this case, want to use something like a checkbox. It may feel right, but again, with a checkbox, you can have multiple selections. Um, and we certainly want to, wouldn't want to use a toggle switch here either. Again, it's possible to select multiple in a toggle switch, and it's really for turning off and on things that, that aren't really related. Okay, so that wraps up tip number two. Use familiar UI elements. Take advantage of all the work that's been done out there. Take advantage of the phones that we're in front of for so many hours a day. Use some of the stuff that is being used in those. It's gonna make your HMI feel really modern and people are gonna understand how to use it much, much faster. It's gonna reduce training, it's gonna reduce errors. All of that is really, really good. Okay, tip number three. Tip number three is use color, dot, 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 with caution, okay? So here's an example of a probably bad use of color. I'm so sorry if this is uh, your screen. I just grabbed this off of the internet, um, but a lot of industrial HMIs look like this. 
Okay, I could not tell you how many times that that I've gone, uh, you know, on site or looked at a machine, and this is exactly what the HMI looks like. Um, the problem here is that your eye doesn't really know where to look, and color kind of loses meaning. A color is, when color is used arbitrarily like this, it has no meaning. And what you want to do is leverage color to draw the user's attention to something. So, for example, if you have an alarm, maybe you want to have some red right? And you want to draw the user's attention to that. But if you're always using all sorts of crazy colors, we see green, we see yellow, we see blue and a different type of green and another different type of green and then a lighter red, um, it's really confusing what's happening. And even here at the bottom where we see this auto mode is like a pinkish red, but it seems like machine faulted and stop motion are also red. It, it's unclear what, what that color means. So my recommendation here is do use color. Um, a lot of people out there will tell you uh, you only should use gray for an industrial HMI. Yeah, maybe, but if you really want it to feel modern and you really want it to feel um, intuitive, use color preferably that complements your brand um, or um, you know the, the, the facility that it's going into, that, that facility's brand. That way that you know there's, there's some brand affiliation inside of the HMI. So use, use a color scheme define a color palette, maybe a primary and secondary color palette and use those consistently throughout, okay? But what you don't wanna use is constantly changing colors and you don't wanna use a lot of really confusing bright colors here, okay? And then reserve, probably a good idea to reserve those you know, reds and things like that for alarms where you really wanna draw the user's attention. But don't be afraid to use color, just make sure you're using it in an intelligent and planned way and make sure that you're leveraging the ability of color to draw the user's eye to something. So we see this all the time in uh, interfaces actually where we have like a submit button and a cancel button, right? And if they want you to hit that submit button, it's probably you know in a, in a green uh, box and then the cancel button maybe has no border at all. So you can use it in that same way, right? Make it intuitive to use the HMI by leveraging color, okay? So we'll move away from this uh, lovely HMI and then onto our bonus tip. I teased out, we're gonna give you a bonus tip today. So navigation schemes is another one that can really contribute to designing a modern feeling HMI. Again, a lot of industrial HMIs have been kind of uh, designed uh, in this kind of on the fly way uh, as you need something else, just you know throw it in and add a button onto a page to, to navigate there. Um, okay, that, that can work, but what you end up with a lot of times is, is like a navigation map uh, that looks something like this. Uh, there's like pages that like loop back on themselves. There's sometimes pages that you can't get to for some reason. Um, and then there's there's often just like confusing ways that, that the navigation hierarchy works. It can be really, really frustrating for a user. I'm sure we've all experienced that where we've been on a website or an app or something and we wanna get somewhere and we just don't know how or we wanna get back to where we were and we don't know how. And it's very, very frustrating for a user and it can make training complex as well. So again, here we wanna take advantage of a lot of research that has been done in user experience and user interface already in the consumer market and clean up the navigation. So my best advice here, we, we could do an episode on navigation um, if that's something interesting, but my best advice is make sure your navigation is clean. You should have some definable navigation hierarchy and a clean way to navigate both laterally in that, that hierarchy and then forwards and backwards in that hierarchy or up and down. Um, so you just wanna make sure that that's well-defined and you know, uh, you're putting some thought into that, okay? And then test it out. Make sure you're using the HMI. And if something feels frustrating to you or confusing to you, it's probably gonna be feel, feeling frustrating to the end user as well. Um, the other thing is we can oftentimes as developers get used to some of those frustrations and find workarounds. Um, you know, oftentimes when a developer is working on something they've created, you know, it takes like four button presses to get somewhere. They can do that very, very quickly and it doesn't feel awkward. Have someone else that hasn't worked on the project, have them come in and navigate through that HMI, get their feedback on it. If it feels frustrating to them, it's gonna feel frustrating to the end user or to your customer, okay? That's definitely not what we want. We wanna make sure that our HMIs are easy to use and have really clean navigation schemes, okay? So hopefully that was helpful to you. Those are our three tips plus one bonus tip. Um, there's a lot more to talk about with HMI design, um, but hopefully this gets you pointed in the right direction, where to look when you're trying to make a more modern feeling, easy to use interface. I wanna ask you guys something. If you have another idea 
Go ahead and leave that in the comments and tell me which one of these is your favorite. If you disagree with me on one of them, please let me know as well. Just go ahead and leave that in the comments and we'll see who comes up with the best tip for modern HMI design. Okay, one more quick teaser before we close out the episode. Um, we are going to be covering AGVs and AMRs next week. So go ahead and put that on your calendar, subscribe to the channel, set up notifications, and you will get a little bing on your phone when we go live with this one. This will be a fun one for those of you interested in how this technology works and how we can use it going forward into the future. All right, thank you so much for joining this episode of This Is Automation Live. If you like the episode, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and share it. Uh, share it with all of your friends, your family, anybody that will watch it. Uh, if you have any questions for me or comments, you can leave them below in the comments or you can send me an email at corey at this-is-automation.com. Look forward to engaging with you guys and learning more about automation in future episodes. Thanks and we will see you next time.